So welcome everyone to the information session about the Spark Tank. What the Spark Tank is, if, um, as you can imagine, is a take off of the Shark Tank where persons come and they pitch ideas of the business that they have started in seeking uh, funding and support from the, the and expertise from the sharks. The, the thought of the original Shark Tank was to spawn entrepreneurship in the United States, and they have seen that be very effective. And so we were copying off of that, hoping for some to spark some innovations among our starting new innovative ministries and um, putting a spark that hopefully would ignite a fire of our new spaces and our new faces in new spaces. We launched New Faces and New Spaces in, in 2018, and then in 2019, we were kind of getting on a roll, and then as you can imagine, it came to a screeching halt in 2020, and no one was really thinking about how do I start a new dinner church or a messy church in the middle of pandemic. Well, after that, we were still not seeing a lot of uh, of of persons like starting new stuff or as far as coming to us for new funding. And so we wanted to get this um, something that could get it going again. And that's where the spark tank designed after the shark tank got started. And so last year we recruited five innovators and had them come together and we put the, the call out there for grants. And we were pretty thrilled that we got uh, 30 applications, which represented about 10, a little bit over 10% of our North Texas Conference churches. Of those, of those 30, all received funding, but we only wanted to put in about eight to 10 into the tank because of time-wise. But we got to the point where we could only, that the applications were just too good. And so we ended up having 11 of those um, come and pitch to the, to the different sharks and how it worked is each one of our sharks got $10,000 and we were uh, we put max grants up to fifteen thousand dollars. So obviously, to get fifteen thousand dollars, you would have to get more than one shark uh, committing funds. We told the sharks they can fund up to four and in twenty five hundred dollar increments in those uh, in their grants. But in addition, everyone that they fund, they have to give a minimum of two hours of coaching to, and so. Uh, a, a shark can give to four different entities at $2,500 ranges, and but then would need to give two hours to each one of those. Or they could give the entire, uh, uh, their entire $10,000 to one and, and work with those. Then after we got these applications in, and this is going to be, and I'm telling you last year's process, because this year's process is, is pretty much the same, we'll be gathering the applications. And then uh, our team in the Center for Church Development will be reviewing these uh, applications. Uh, we'll pick the ones that go into the tank, and then we meet with the sharks ahead of time and evaluate those. And people start saying, okay, which ones are you feeling called uh, to fund? And it's not completely scripted who's going to be giving what once the tank is live. But we do that so that the people who come and pitch last may have the best pitch of the day. And we're like, oh, sorry, we gave all our money away earlier. And so we we coordinate it. But once we get once we go into the tank, all bets are off. People who said they were going to give don't have to give. People who said they were going to give a certain amount could give less or could give more. And so it is live and it is real in that 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 uh, sense, but for those who are pitching last, we don't want them to be afraid that all money will be gone by the time they get into the tank. And so there's some of that coordination that takes place before we get in there. Uh, we do, um, if you make it into the tank, there, there was a uh, consolation prize of $1,000. And so we knew no one would be going home, uh, especially after they took all the time to do the application. And obviously if they got in the tank, it was a good application and coming and pitching and all that. We definitely didn't want that to be for naught. And so there was a consolation prize of $1,000, uh, which we will be doing again this year. But last year, the sharks were uh, feeling, we don't want anybody going home without a shark. And so the positive of that is everyone got sharks. Everyone got at least $2,500, which is the minimum grant in the, in the tank. 
but the downside is no one gets the full 15,000 because there's a limited amount of, of money that each of them have. Uh, but there was also one that um, got one amount and then somebody was inspired by the spark tank and they had a private donor come and make a donation uh, for the, uh, uh, to make up even more of what, of the gap from what they were asking for. So we are praying that once again, that our spark tank this year will, will give spark to great innovation. And just your attendance here uh, tells me that there's interest in this and that we will be getting more applications. And so we have decided to move from doing one spark tank, we're going to do three tanks. So the, we're going to have a clergy tank which is at, going to be held at clergy retreat on Wednesday morning when we have our different options that we can be doing. It will be in front of a live studio audience. I say that, but we probably won't have it. It may not be online, whereas the other ones uh, uh, will be. The, and then we are going to be having an urban suburban tank, which is for the North Central District and for the Metro District. And we want to do a real push of our rural in our town and country churches. And so we're going to be having a, uh, a town and country tank for the Northwest and East District. And it's going to be held at Whitesboro United Methodist Church. And I see the pastor of Whitesboro with us, uh, Chad McSwain. And I'm thankful for them that they're going to be able to host that. And the uh, suburban uh, urban one will be at the conference center. Those will be on December 3rd up in the December 3rd in Whitesboro and the afternoon, Sunday afternoon, December 4th in the conference center. And then again, the clergy retreat one will be on, uh, uh, on that Wednesday. We'll only have uh, four pitches for the clergy retreat because of time, uh, but we anticipate eight pitches in each one of the, in each one of the two tanks. And and if it's a good application, for example, we had an application come in from Terrell, Texas last year, and all of they asked for was $1,000. Well, it was a fantastic application. It was to turn a, uh, a grief group of the church into a community grief group. And they wanted funds to run ads in the newspaper, run Facebook ads, and say, we're, we're launching this community grief group. Um, and... Uh, I talked to Pastor Peter, and he said they just had an amazing turnout, uh, and it really became a community uh, a, a community group. They had Baptists, they had Presbyterians, um, but they also got who they were really going after, and that was people who did not have a church home or have a community, who found a community in there, and some of those ended up coming into the church, and I believe uh, Peter baptized a family that came out of that that grief group, and so there is a huge um, diversity of, of types of applications, but if there's if you're seeking five hundred or thousand dollars, we get your application. Probably won't put you in the tank, but if it's a good, then we'll go ahead and issue funding on that. And out of the thirty applications we got last year, I think all maybe except for one, uh, we gave a check to, and I think that one went back, tweaked some things, and they ended up getting funding. So to go over the dates again, um, Jessica will be going over that with some of the uh, deadlines on the application. But our three tanks are clergy retreat, which is just for clergy, and we're going to have uh, clergy uh, sharks. Uh, like John McLarty, Jessica Wright, they will be, um, uh, Jessica Wright had received a grant last year, and this is right up her wheelhouse. Uh, for the... Um, and then on December 3rd, which I believe is a Saturday, I hope I'm not getting my dates messed up. December 3rd is going to be the Whitesboro uh, Town and Country for the uh, Northwest and East Districts. Um, I know Ron Henderson is going to be a, a, a shark. Chad has a businessman there in Whitesboro. Uh, Chad sent him a, an email and said, uh, how would you like to give away $10,000? And uh, so it, it's really a fun job and we're still recruiting a couple more. We're gonna have four sharks on each one of those. Um, and I think we're just, we're gonna have three sharks at the clergy one since it's going to be a smaller one. Uh, for this, for the urban suburban one, we have Tasasha Tell, who is a marketing expert. 
uh, out of the village. She has her own marketing company as well as I think she works for AT&T and doing their marketing. And so just um, very sharp person. So we, we have a good mix of clergy and very, uh, very gifted and talented uh, laity that are going to be serving on, uh, on this. And so uh, the third is in Whitesboro and the fourth will be at the conference center on a Sunday afternoon. So now I want to turn it over to Jessica to uh, go over the, the applications uh, and the application process. Uh, Jessica? Thank you, Owen, and thank you all for being here. I'm excited to see um, so many faces that were not part of this part tank last year, and some of those that were that were um, as well. Um, the application process, as uh, Owen said, for the clergy retreat, uh, applications are due on the 3rd of uh, um, October, and we'll be reviewing those. And then um, they'll be, you'll be notified with plenty of time before this part tank um, at the clergy retreat. Um, I am putting, um, the, I'm sorry, yes, I'm the mission coordinator for the Center for Church Development for those of you who have not met me um, yet. Um, you probably have seen a lot of emails, but it's great to see um, faces, even if it's through Zoom. I'm putting on the on the chat the application to, to uh, fill out the application for Spark Tank. Um, we look at those, we review them, and, uh, and then um, we'll notify you if you uh, qualify to pitch at the clergy retreat. Um, that application is due on October um, 3rd, October 4th. Um, yeah, October 4th is the application is due. Um, we need to receive those. And then for the regional one, it's on November 21st. Um, if you have questions through the application process or, or you know, any of that, um, you can just give us a call. Uh, just because you submit the application doesn't mean that it has to be a final one, but it has to be received before that date. Um, we will notify you with time um, if you are going to be part of the pitch and then uh, are you going to be pitching at the, at the Spark Tank? We do ask to, um, if you can provide, to provide a complete application, including um, your finances, your, your financials, um, what are you asking for, what is the money that you're asking for, what, what is exactly that you want to be doing, and we'll have Matt go over. Um, what are the components that we are going to be look for in those applications that, you know, the new, what does it mean by new faces, what does it mean new spaces, et cetera, et cetera. He'll go over in detail over um, that soon. But um, like I said, there's uh, the applications for the clergy retreat are due on October 4th, and we need to receive them in our office so we can review them, go over them and notify you, and you can have plenty of time to be ready for those pitches. Um, for uh, the regional Spark Tech, the applications are due in November 20, 21st. And um, something that uh, we mentioned, um, the clergy retreat is a small, smaller one, so we'll have three charts, but the amount of the maximum grant that you can receive, it'll be the same um, at the clergy or at the regional one. So you, if you pitch at the clergy retreat, you will not be at a disadvantage. Um, instead of uh, pleading, uh, pitching or submitting your application for the regional one. So the maximum amount of grant this year is $15,000. Um, it will take at least to have two, uh, two charts to join into that application because for the, uh, for the Spark Tech, um, that is gonna be clergy retreat. The, um, the maximum amount that each of the charts will receive is 7,500. So you will have to have convinced two, um, two charts to, uh, to join and, and same thing as in the regional ones. You'll have to convince at least two charts to join in in order to receive the maximum amount of grant. So, uh, but there is no disadvantage of pitching in one versus pitching on the, on the other one because the maximum amount will be the same. $15,000 is the maximum grant. We got amazing um, spaces, new spaces created last year, on bigger scale, smaller scale. And we look forward to, to hearing those ideas that you are developing and that you are excited about connecting to, um, to your mission field. And um, one more thing I wanna bring is that when I said mission field, we do have uh, Mission Insight and Mission Insight is a key tool that can help you get to know who your neighbors are and who you have around, around you when you're trying to connect with those new faces. So if you don't have an account for Mission Insight, uh, we, I can provide you um, an account on how to get connected, how to start, 
how to learn about mission insight. There's a few um, webinars that are coming up and a few that we have done already, and we can sit down one-on-one -on -one too, and um, you can connect with me at Vargas at ntcumc.org. I can give you the account, your mission insight account, and I can go over with you um, a little bit on how to use mission insights so you can start getting to know that mission field and those new faces that, that you want to connect with. Um, so yeah, I think I cover um, uh, pretty much. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to Matt, who is going to be talking about what are we looking for in those um, um, applications when we talk about new faces in new spaces. Matt. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's good to see all of your faces. Um, I am Matt Temple. I am the Associate Director of New Church Starts for the Center of Church Development. And uh, most of you look familiar to me and um, excited to see uh, what, what comes out of our Spark Tank this year. Just going to go over really quickly sort of the five components we're looking for that, that makes um, something qualify, if you will, as a new space. Um, and so the first thing is... Uh, obviously that it gathers new people. So we, we're not wanting to fund um, a revamped Bible study or Sunday school. We want, we want to see whatever it is that you're trying um, has at least in some way, shape or form a vision to reach folks who you're not already um, connected with and reaching. Um, and then the second is also in the name. So new, new faces in new spaces. So we want to, um, we're really looking to fund um, kind of innovative, creative ideas that are happening oftentimes outside of the four walls of your church, um, or at least uh, a new space within your church that's gathering new people um, that, is, that is really focused on that. Uh, the third thing is that it gathers regularly. And so um, that we don't, we're not looking really to fund a one-time event. We want there to be some consistency so that you're, you're in a sense, like think about it like you're starting a little micro church. You have this like a, a component of this regular rhythm of gathering with um, with your with this community that you're forming. Uh, the fourth thing is that it's connected to a United Methodist Church. So um, we we realize that in a lot of cases the um, the ministry that happens in a new space and the people that are reached may or may not ever come to the main sort of campus of your church and that's okay, but we want the new space to be connected to the campus. And um, that really ties into the last piece, which is we wanted to have some sort of discipling component. Um, so you're not just, uh, you're not just meeting to do something fun, but there's, there's an element of gospel discipleship work that's happening. And, um, you know, even a pathway, if you will, of, of discipleship in that. So, um, we're looking for uh, we're looking for those those are sort of the main things. So really, the field's wide open in terms of whatever your ideas are. It, we just want to make sure that whatever those ideas are, it 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 implements those um, those five components. So um, yeah, with that, Owen, I'm throwing it back to you. Well, Jessica just posted a uh, our last year's those who made it into the tank. And uh, the amount that they went home with to kind of give you an idea of um, some ideas. I know some, a lot of those names don't tell you what that space is. Um, but I, I think and part of us, we um, there we don't want to put you in any boxes to um, I, we were amazed at the diversity of applications. We got the different types of spaces that people in ways people were gathering people and discipling people. Uh, but we'll we'll say that the the ones that didn't make it. Most of them, their weakest component was the discipleship component, that it did not have a, a strong, distinctive um, means of doing discipleship. It may be gathering people, but um, a lot, in some of those, they were, they were gathering for uh, purposes. It, well, you may gather for purposes other than discipleship, but how is distinctly Wesleyan discipleship taking place within that space is what we're, uh, is what we're looking for. So with that, I'm going to pause and see what uh, what questions that you have that we didn't address. 
Um, I uh, this before we go to question, I just posted. Um, we did a seminar, a webinar um, last year with Luke, uh, Reverend Luke Edwards. He's, a, he's an associate director of um, Fresh Expression, and he talks about part of what it is uh, of new those new spaces and new faces, like how to reach. And and he especially touches a little bit uh, on the discipleship component because um, there is different levels on how you can do that discipleship. And he talks about it in, in this webinar that we hosted um, last year. I included the link there. Um, and then, um, so you can see, and in the application, there'll be videos that of practitioners local that have that are doing or have done um, new faces and new spaces here on the North Texas Conference. I'll include that as, um, as part of the application. So you can look at those videos and you can see also here from practitioners here and for people who have um, established new faces and new spaces, um, how do they manage that, that discipleship or how they have, they're they able to integrate that discipleship component into it. And as you're thinking of what questions that you have uh, right now, uh, we have one of our sharks from last year, Danielle Kim, and I'm going to ask her to speak briefly about as she was sitting in the room as a shark and listening to the pitches and having looked at the applications before the people came in to pitch. Uh, Danielle, will you share uh, briefly what you were looking for? Yeah, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I think last year, as I was looking through the application, one of the things that really was for me personally important, different sharks had different importance, but for me was how is this um, innovatively and uh, innovatively innovative? And how is this um, gathering people in a way that is structured? Um, I was looking for um, the possibility and um, how do I say this, the um, capability, not capability, but, you know, possibility of how is this going to be able to gather people um, and is this viable? And another thing that I, uh, I, I remember it was important to me was um, discipleship component. So, yeah, to succinctly describe what was important was what, to me personally was, was those. Thanks, Danielle. Okay, what questions do you have? Um, two quick questions. One seems kind of obvious, but imagine that if we pitch at clergy retreat, then there's no pitch later. That's uh, the uh, clergy pitch later based on uh, the, the area, rural or urban or suburban, is just for clergy that haven't pitched clergy retreat. Is that correct? Yeah. So the 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 regional ones are open for everyone. The clergy retreat yeah. ones just open for clergy, and it's a smaller one. Now the maximum yeah. prize we wanted to make sure it's the same, so you can still get fifteen thousand. Um, but it, but we're on, it's smaller. And if you if you pitch at clergy retreat and get a shark at clergy retreat, yes, that, that would disqualify you from the the regional one. But say you pitch at clergy retreat. Your application is still fresh, still active, and we'll say, hey, you didn't go home with a shark. We can give you your consolation prize of $1,000, or do you want to hold off, and we'll put you in your regional, your regional tank. Also, if you get your application in for the clergy and say you're not going into, uh, um, into the tank at the clergy retreat, um, we could say um, we'll just hold on to your application and... Uh, for your regional and see what other applications we get because you may go into the regional tank because there's only going to be four go into the clergy retreat and that's from throughout the whole conference whereas we anticipate having eight to ten go into the regional tanks and that's just from two districts so that answer your question was there two questions yes. or just the one well the second question is kind of could you go through the process again so you apply you get selected or not and then you pitch is that correct yes, uh, yes. You have, you, i'm sorry go ahead <laughs> so yeah so you know get the application in uh by those due dates and then uh we will be reviewing those um uh, between they go, come in and the spark tank and we'll let people know who is going to pitch and who's not and it may be a situation whereas, you know, we get your application and said, okay, this isn't going to go into the tank. 
Um, but we would like to give you $500 for this or $1,000 for this, or, you know, it may go into and receive one of our micro grants or we'll just, or we call you and we explain, this is why you're not receiving funding, which, you know, if you apply for the clergy one, you could reformulate it and apply and see where your shortcomings are and apply again for the regional ones. So then they pitch. One thing we're doing differently this year from last year is last year we um, prioritized uh, getting the grants out quickly. And so after the spark tank, we got the grants out uh, real quick. And I saw an interview with Mark Cuban and Mark Cuban said, you know, only about 30% of the deals on Shark Tank actually become deals. Because once we get off camera and get into the details, uh, a lot of times there's, well, most of the times something comes up and it doesn't work out. Well, we had to go after a few of our grantees and ask for the money back because it, uh, it for whatever reason that you know, it was their idea. They formulated their idea. It was a great idea. It was a great pitch. But sometimes the clergy moved. Sometimes the layperson moved uh, that, that pitched it. And other reasons that we had to go and ask for some uh, some money back. And so what we're doing this, this year is the shark is going to be the one who has to release the money. If a shark funds something, they have to commit to two hours to doing the coaching. We also had some persons get the money and then they never contacted the, co the shark to get the coaching. And so we're wanting one, wanting the, the shark to take a little more time to bet it on the other side of the tank and to ensure that the coaching takes place. And so it's on the grantee to contact the, the shark, set up a time, receive the coaching, and then the shark contacts the Center for Church Development and says, hey, they're ready to launch now, or hey, they're not going to be ready to launch for another month or two months or whatever it means, or it says, hey, this is, uh, this is not, it's a great idea. They're working on it, but it's a long ways from launching. And, and, and then um, hopefully we can avoid as a Center for Church Development having to go uh, fish money back, which no one enjoys. So that's one of the changes that we're making from last year to next year. Great questions. Thank you for that, Jonathan. Others? Hey, Owen. Uh, my name is Ted Hyde. I have two questions. Uh, let me lower my hand here. Can you hear me all right? Yes, Ted. Thanks. Okay. My first question is, how do you know? So I'm a lay person at a little Methodist church in Flower Mound. How do you know if your church is considered a town and country church or an urban suburban church? Uh, just districts is how we're doing it. And so that's probably not a fair descriptor, but that's how we're doing it to describe what's happening in the district. So one for the Northwest and East districts, which would be our, our, our town and country, which where I'm from, we would have considered Wichita Falls a city and not a town. Uh, I'm from small town as well, but because you're in the Flower Mound, you'd be in the North Central District, and yes. so it would go. It would go to the December fourth one, which okay. we're calling urban suburban. I must have missed that. I dialed in a few minutes late, so I didn't understand that. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, y'all are experts at this, uh, and so I have just a little peanut brain, and I'm just. I wanted you to expound a little bit on making decisions on funding before you've heard all of the proposals. Because indeed, I heard you say that there is a process to hold back funding until everybody gets a chance, but it's a possibility that the ones at the end are really terrific but there's also a possibility that the ones at the end are not as good as the ones at the beginning. So you've been held holding back funding to work that could anyway, maybe I hope that makes sense. So yes. why wouldn't you listen to all of them and then make a decision on, okay, here's how we're going to split this up. Because it doesn't make for good TV, Ted. <laughs> um, and so 
it, it makes for much better TV if we're in real life, you know, making the making the offer and uh, uh, and you know, if you've watched any of the videos, the best part of the videos is when the people came out of the room and they're like, "How how did it feel to get that? Who are who's the shark you get to?" And so it, it really made for a. Uh, uh, for good TV to be able to do it live. And now the reason we, um, and I, and it's probably not fair to say holding back funding from the beginning, basically, you know, all the sharks saying we're doing this and doing that. And the sharks do not have to give away all their money. And there wouldn't be anything to say, Hey, we have this fund left over. Let's go back and give a little more to this other one, which is, which is, uh, kind of what happened, but it happened through a private donor who went back and gave one to somebody who came uh, earlier in the day. Uh, but we're hoping that having the pre-meeting and having all the written application down, we can get a good idea who the sharks want to fund. And so I don't serve as a shark. I don't, um, you know, I, I don't advise kind of how money goes. Uh, I serve as more the facilitator, but we spent the, the sharks get all the applications uh, days before we meet, and then we have a pre-meeting that lasts a couple hours where we're where we're kind of discussing the funds. Uh, but um, it's a funny answer, but it's an honest answer. The reason that we don't wait and hear all the pitches and give it at the end is it it just doesn't make for good TV. And we're wanting to people watch. We're wanting people to engage because not only from the applications we're getting, we're hoping that the ideas that we get and people hear and they listen to by watching the live stream sparks ideas and inspiration for them and their ministries. So, Thank you so thanks. much for allowing us to participate in this call. Yeah. All right. Kathy. Yeah. Could you elaborate a little more on the pitch itself? And by that, I'm, <clears throat> I'm more or less asking, is the pitch closer to, sorry for those who haven't been through this process, closer to the ordination interviews or closer to the clergy spouse video? at annual conference or anything in between. Danielle, how would you answer that? I'm sorry, Kathy, would you repeat the question? I just wanted to um, ask about the pitch itself. How how creative is it? Is it more like a question and answer or is it, um, is it like I, I a would, creative say, presentation? Oh yeah, go, I would say personally, go creative, go, go and spread your wings. Yeah. <laughs> oh, our sure. And how much yeah. time is allowed? Oh, when? How much time the was pitch, allowed? So we last year, um, I think we allowed five minutes for the pitch itself. Uh, this year, we're going to have to wait and see and how many pitches we actually allow to go into the tank, and and that will determine a lot of it. But it's it's a quick time. It's only it was only like five minutes. But, you know, we had somebody doing dance ministry and they came in and they put on the music and they started dancing. The life mm -hmm. in abundance was a, a holistic health, spiritual and physical health. And um, the the people in the pitch came in jazzer size type outfits. And and so uh, I I think it's much less like uh, ordination interviews and, and much more like a uh, clergy spouse. Uh, you know, we want the information and then. And I think just watch the Shark Tank and see how the Shark Tank pitches go. They come in creative, but they get their information apart. And then things get more serious during the question answer time. And that's kind of how yeah. it happens. Yeah. yeah so I think year. Shark Tank. Watch YouTube videos of Shark Tank and YouTube videos of uh, Shark Tank pitches. And that'll give you a kind of that'll give you a good idea of what we're looking for. So like from the Sharks perspective, I really appreciated all the humor, all the visuals that they brought. So one of the things I still remember is that um, they brought the box of, uh, so the whole ministry was about like teaching people how to cook with the boxes of food donations that they get. Um, and I still remember the food donation that they actually brought. And, you know, um, they asked what this particular zucchini, I, I, I don't even remember what it was, acorn. How do you do you know how to cook acorn? That's a good question. And you know, so that so I would say, but then that's me. I'm not the shark this year. So <laughs> and the Shady Grove, who was asking for a baseball ministry for their kids, brought all the kids in there and in, in their baseball uniforms and passed out baseball cards to us. I mean, uh they they had a great pitch. So 
Yeah. And we're looking for good TV and, and ordination interviews are probably not very good TV, uh, Kathy. <laughs> so what about uh, using media like PowerPoint and so forth? Is that permissible? It, it could be, but I'm just thinking about a setup and um, how easy that's to get set up because we're doing quick turnarounds and how good that would be on our, our, uh, our media, but you okay. might could, I think I'm, I'm trying to think if somebody did bring in a screen, I don't think anyone brought in a screen last year, but, um, if you let us know ahead of time and you want some sort of video, we might can accommodate that. So for the, <clears throat> excuse me, for the, uh, clergy, uh, pitch, does that mean that only the clergy pitch so we yeah, can't bring any laity with us? Well, I, I mean, I guess you could have them come into a clergy retreat Wednesday morning for that during that time. I mean, I don't think we would prohibit that. Um, but I was just kind of operating off of the assumption yeah. that it would be just clergy. But I'm not That's sure I was limited. You have more than one clergy from a church pitch. Yeah. 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 But I, yeah. Well, we had multiple applications from, from the same churches. Uh, and sometimes they got in, you know, sometimes they didn't. And we had multiple clergy from um, a church pitch. Uh, they didn't all make it into the tank, but they did all receive funding. Yeah, these are good questions. Appreciate them. What other questions do you have? Well, I am hearing none, and uh, but I'm well pleased with the turnout for this for this meeting, and it makes me think we're going to have uh, some good applications in, and a lot of applications come in. And again, don't our contact information there? It's just all of our last names at ntcumc.org, North Texas Conference United Methodist Church.org, Ross at ntcumc.org, Vargas at ntcumc.org, and Temple at ntcumc.org. If at any phase in there, if you're still in just trying to think about ideas, Matt Temple loves to do um, do ideation with people and and uh, and could do that at a Zoom call with your church. Uh, Jessica's there to help you with your application in any way I can be helpful. Uh, we are we are available to you, and we are just praying that the 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 sparks that are being ignited in this turn into a fire of revival, because the Lord knows that our our people needed our churches needed but even more than that uh, the people we are called to serve and minister to uh, need some good news in this in these in these days so i thank y'all for your time here i thank you for your presence and we'll be praying for y'all as you put together your spark tank applications so blessings to you bye